Ole Miss going to Death Valley. Ole Miss is a two and a half point favorite there at LSU. Over under is set at 64. Whoa. 64. All right. Uh, I'd be damned. That's a lot of points, man. Um, I'm still wow. nervous. I, I, wasn't I, I know where you, I know what you're thinking. It's like, all right, do I need to go ahead and bet this? Or <laughs> I'm still nervous. As even as good as a, a Ole Miss's defense is, uh, I don't know, man. It's two pretty good offenses playing. This seems like this could be a barn burner. Um, we we heard a couple people or saw a couple people in the comment section talking about one of those games uh, earlier, saying whoever's got the ball last. That's what Vegas is predicting here, and. Ole Miss going on the road at LSU. There's, I'm sorry, but there's no way I'm picking Ole Miss to cover this football game. Uh, I just, I don't know what anybody's. I mean, yeah, Ole Miss played a good football game against South Carolina this past weekend, but um, I don't know, man. It wasn't some kind of just offensive showcase that they put on. You know, they scored less than 30 points in that football game. So I don't know, man. I, I, and I know South Carolina's got a, a a good defense, but here's the deal with LSU. This team is it, it, the the defense is under construction. There's there's orange barrels up. There's reflectors everywhere. There's four men over there watching one man work. There's construction going on. Okay, on this LSU defense, but they are a whole lot better at limiting explosive plays this season. They're a lot better than they were. Are they? completely sound defensively? No. It's a lot of the same players that we saw last year for LSU. The defensive line is not great. I don't think Ole Miss is going to be able to accentuate that a whole lot. I don't think Ole Miss's offensive line is very great. I don't. Ole Miss has got issues running the football. Now, can LSU keep those issues going for Ole Miss? I'm not so sure. I'm not so sure about that. But I think LSU has been good enough at keeping people in front of them that I, they're going to be able to make it tough on Ole Miss. And not to mention, this game being on the road, I, I, I got a problem betting the favorite to cover a spread on the road right now. I mean, these teams are too close. All these teams are too close together as far as talent level and things like that. Um, going on the road means something in college football. And... As of right now, I'm leaning, you know, LSU plus the points. Um, but really, that over under really intrigues me a lot, Mason, because I, I just think that that uh, that under is going to be able to hit in this football game. What are your thoughts on this one? Uh, Ole Miss, the defensive led football team, LSU, the offensive led football team. Again, a clash of styles here in an SEC matchup. Yeah, well, it's a night game in LSU or in, in Baton Rouge at LSU. Um, so you can you can go ahead and caveat everything that you say uh, with that pretty much. I do think that Baton Rouge at night is the toughest place to play in America. I, I um, want to go to a lot of college football stadiums. I don't really want to go to that one. No. I'm scared. Yeah, especially if I'm my literally team's playing scared. and I got to yeah. wear that, that shirt in. No, that's... If you're not uh, from Cajuns the South, are different. yeah. If you're not from the South or you ain't been to Cajun country, just I'm warning you now. I mean, and I'm not joking. I'm not making a. This is not a joke. But like, I, I'm not even kidding. One out of every ten people in Louisiana have a mental illness, and I'm not making that up. That's like a real stat. I'm being for real. Like, those people are crazy as hell, and they love their tigers. All right, yeah. so. Ain't catching me in there, uh, but I will give you a go tiger. All right, sorry yeah. to interrupt, but I mean that I think that that weighs heavily into this football game. Um, if you put these two teams on a neutral site playing any other time of the uh, of the day, I think Ole Miss wins that game. Um, I do think that they are that much better, speci specifically on the defensive side of the football. Um, that I, I feel like Ole Miss could win that game. Um, you know, seven times out of ten, probably, but. The fact that it's in Baton Rouge at night um, makes this a 50-50 game, in my opinion. Uh, w when you look at these two teams head-to-head, -head, Ole Miss is fourth in the country uh, in, in passing yards per game at 333.3 .3 yards per game. Um, 
that's uh, as, as really good. I mean, this is a this is a really good Ole Miss def- or excuse me offense as a whole in the games that they play teams with no defense. Even last week, you know, they, they faced South Carolina, only scored twenty seven points. South Carolina's got a pretty good defense. The week before that, they played Kentucky, uh, only scored seventeen points. Kentucky's got a pretty good defense, right? So I, I'm a little bit concerned about this offense for uh, Ole Miss, which was supposed to be leading the team. Um, when they play teams with good defenses, LSU, while they are better, they're not a they're not as good as as South Carolina, and they're not as good as Kentucky on defense. So I, I do think that Ole Miss is going to be able to score some points this week. When you look at their rushing attack, Henry Parrish is one of the best uh, running backs in the SEC. He's twenty seventh in the country, averaging ninety five yards per game, but there's a huge drop off from him. Um, there's a lack of depth behind him and we saw him get banged up in the Kentucky game might've been preserved a little bit last week against South Carolina. Um, what condition is he in? He's probably hundred percent, but I I think it's, I think it's fair to question, uh, if he's going to be able to tote the rock 20 times in this game receiving, I think they got two of the best wide receivers in, in college football. Uh, Trey Harris leads the country with 147.5 yards per game. Juice Wells is 99th in the country with 61.7 yards per game and is surging right now. He, it looks like he's getting better, getting um, his feet up under him in this system, and, and he's looking like one of the, the, the best wide receivers in the country. Now, if you look at LSU's offense, pretty similar, really. I mean, uh-huh. Garrett Nussmeyer's fifth in the country at 330 yards per game. Caden Durham, who really didn't – get a chance to run the football a ton the first and second weeks uh, of the year it is now averaging uh, 61 yards per game. And a lot of that, like I said, is coming on the, on the later part of this early season. He's 98th in the country, by the way. Um, and then they've also got two receivers and Aaron Anderson. He's 52nd in the country with 74.2 yards per game. Kyron Lacey, 66 with 70.4 yards per game. So two similar offenses, right? Um, when you look at LSU's offensive line, I think that they have a decided edge. Uh, if, if you're comparing the two offensive lines, um, Ole Miss's offensive line has shown some issues, uh, but they've shown issues in games that, uh, against teams that have really good defensive lines. I don't think, I don't think LSU has a, a really strong defensive line, although they do have two defensive ends that are playing pretty well in Brady Swenson and Savion Jones. Uh, that they've got 11 and a half tackles for a loss between the two of them. So they're playing pretty good on the edge, but on the interior of the defensive line is where I have questions. Uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm curious um, to see what they're able to do, especially if, if Parrish gets going in the running game, I think that could, that could spell, um, you know, th- that could, that could make for a long day, I guess, for this LSU defense and they could get gashed pretty heavily, but um, that being said, what they're lacking on the interior of that defensive line, they they make up for at linebacker. They got uh, uh, Whit Weeks, who's leading the team with 48 tackles, and, and Greg Penn, who's got 38 just behind him. Uh, so I, I, I do feel like this LSU defense has um, some good players, but overall, as a whole, there, there's not a, not a ton on the back end. I mean – Let's face it, I, I I feel like the receivers for Ole Miss are going to have an edge in this football game. Um, I, I don't know. Advantage, Ole Miss's defense. They're, I mean, th- this is one of the best defenses in the country. I mean, when you, when you look at their defense, uh, their DBs, all right, to, to start with, Trey Amos, eight pass deflections, two interceptions. One of the best DBs in the country statistically so far this year. On the other side of him, you got Trey Washington, who's got five pass deflections himself. Um, so that there, you've got two pretty much lockdown corners who are going to play uh, against these these uh, two really good receivers for LSU. And then you look at the run game for LSU. I really like Caden Durham, but when you're going up against this defensive front, man, it's going to be really tough. Um, let, let me just read some stats for for Ole Miss's defense so far because it's it's pretty. Pretty jarring. All these players I'm mentioning stats on, by the way, are top 100 at, at their position or or just overall in these statistical categories. But um, at defensive tackle, J.J. Pegues, six and a half tackles for a loss. Also got a few touchdowns this year, which is pretty incredible uh, for a 320-pound guy. Yeah. Um, 
Defensive end, Princely Ute, six tackles for a loss. Walter Nolan, defensive tackle. He did leave the game with an injury. I'm not sure of his status in this. Um, well, I'm luckily, this will him... be the SEC game, so we'll have that injury report on Tuesday, right? Is it Tuesday or Wednesday? Yeah, I, I think so. I think um, it's on Tuesday. It, it doesn't look like he's doesn't look like they've got him out. So that is good if they have him ready to go in this game. He's a huge part of this defensive front. Uh, but he's got six tackles for a loss. Defensive end Jared Ivey's got five tackles for a loss. Then you look at their linebackers. Chris Paul, 41 tackles, seven tackles for a loss. Sunterine Perkins, six and a half tackles for a loss. Uh, and then uh, another linebacker, TJ Dottery, with 38 tackles, uh, which is, I believe, second on the team. So, Really tough front seven to match up against if you're LSU. Um, I, I don't see a lot of success coming uh, from the running game if you're LSU. So the question to me is, can Garrett Nussmeyer not only play effectively in the passing game, but he's going to have to hit some deep shots because, um, you know, the, like I said, the the middle of this defense for, uh, for Ole Miss is pretty good. He's going to have to challenge the safeties because that's, that's really the weakest part of the field for this Ole Miss defense. And uh, and and Nussmeyer can definitely do that. I think uh, Lacey, for one, is a burner. I mean, he can get behind any defense pretty much. Um, but And then Aaron Anderson, too. I mean, that, that that's kind of the question to me. Uh, and then and then you look at the tight end for, uh, for uh, uh, LSU, Mason Taylor. Is he going to be able to get involved against this this front seven? That's, that's a big question mark for me, but... Um, ultimately I, I do think, I do think both teams are pretty similar, but I give Ole Miss the advantage just because of their defense. They're playing really good right now. They're, they're really statistically looking like one of the best defenses in the league, but they haven't faced an offense like Ole Miss or like LSU. Um, I, I'm, I'm kind of curious to see what they do against a really good offense because they haven't really faced one at all this year. Yeah. So, uh, and you may have said something, uh, I'm sitting here talking with, uh, our good buddy Tyler here in the comment section, but do you know if Chris Hilton is back? Is he, what, what's the dealio with him? Because that's a big deal. If Chris um, Hilton still says he's questionable. Yeah. So he had that bone bruise early in the season and that was a big blow. That was a big blow for this LSU offense. Um, yeah, I, I'm just interested to see Chris Hilton. I think if he does play, could play a major, major role in this football game. Um, adds a whole other element to LSU's offense because you've got somebody providing some type of smoke screen, right, for for Lacey and and can definitely uh, help open things up in the passing game. Um, all right, man, I feel pretty good about where we're at on that one. Look, I I got to do some more research on this one and. It makes sense why Ole Miss is a two and a half point favorite. Just to kind of sum this up, it's at LSU. I think Ole Miss would be actually like a touchdown favorite if this game was on a neutral site. I think I think they're probably more like a touchdown. Um, so with it being at LSU, I feel like this makes a little bit of sense. But Ole Miss and LSU's offenses, I think, are just about a wash. I think they're just about a wash with one another. But clearly Ole Miss has an edge defensively, very clearly. So they, they, they've they got the check mark in that category over LSU there. This game might come down to special teams, man, and that's something I'm probably going to look at a good bit going into this breakdown. I want to see which one of these teams, special teams-wise, you know, is going to be able – who's got an edge, I guess I could say. Oh.